Hello once again my friends. Today we'll be discussing the oldest form of technical analysis in the world. Japanese candlesticks. Monohisa Homa is credited with developing Japanese candlesticks in 17th century Japan. He is said to have studied and analyzed the price patterns, weather conditions and trader psychology of the preceding 10 years before starting to trade, and he is said to have made over 100 successful trades on the trot. He retired a rich man and went on to write the world's first two books on technical analysis. The ancients have long taught us that by studying the past we can learn about the future and Homer put this wisdom into practice. He then went even further by passing his knowledge and experience down to us. The principles of trading developed by Homer, who we could call the world's first market guru, go by the name of Japanese candlesticks. This is also the name of the type of chart used to record price. Japanese candlestick charting and analysis were introduced to the West in 1985 and the charting method quickly became popular. But before going any further, I'd like to quickly run through the basic elements of Japanese candlesticks. The candlestick is basically a rectangle with the open price and the closed price at either end. The high price and low price are attached to the rectangle with vertical lines. The rectangle is called the candlestick body or sometimes real body and the vertical lines are known as the shadows, wicks or hairs. If close is greater than open, it means that price has risen over the period and the candlestick has a white body. If close is lower than open, it tells us that price has fallen over the period and the candlestick is black. This color change makes the candlestick chart more immediate and easier to interpret than the traditional Western bar chart. Sometimes the candlestick does not have any shadows. These are known as marabotsu candlesticks. We shall be discussing the implications of different types of candlestick throughout this film. Many people feel that candlesticks are more aesthetically pleasing and of course the West has had an enduring fascination for all things Eastern. The very names of the patterns, for example, the Morning Star, Dark Cloud Cover and the Dragonfly Doji are evocative and have a sort of mystical romance. And from an economic point of view, the fact that the Japanese nation became an economic superpower not once but twice in the 20th century suggests there's a lot to be learned from the Japanese way of looking at things. As we mentioned in Chart Analysis 1, although Japanese candlesticks and bars were developed in complete isolation from each other, both charting methods use the same four key prices as the basis of their construction. These key prices are, of course, the high, low, open and close. The similarities do not end there and we'll be discussing a number as we consider some of the simple and not so simple combinations of Japanese candlesticks. You'll often come across the terms long and short candlesticks. These terms have nothing to do with going long or short. They are, in fact, 
more simply connected to the length of the candlestick. It begs the question, how long is a long candlestick? If that sounds like a bit of a conundrum, don't be alarmed. As is so often the case, the answer here is, it's all relative. Generally speaking, the length of the candlestick is the difference between the high and low. The length of the candlestick we're interested in is compared to the length of the average candlestick. Some writers suggest averaging the length of the candlestick either for the last five or ten periods. Others go further and advise using rumours to write a new indicator which gives the SMA of candle length over a natural cycle. For example, for daily candlesticks you could average over 22 days, which is the trading month, or 65 days, which is a quarter. Personally, I let my eye be the judge, and if a candlestick looks longer than the average, it's long, and if it looks shorter than the average, it's short. If you'd like further information about averaging out candle length, just drop me a line at fxc at fxclub.com and I'll happily oblige. Of course, you need to take care when working with intraday candles. Please bear in mind that the opening and closing of the major exchanges around the world distort candlestick length and make any comparative analysis hazardous. You must always take the time of day and the currency pair that you're working on into account. But the main features of Japanese candlesticks, the information that they carry and the signals they give off hold as true for intraday charts as they do for daily charts and beyond. A very effective trade system for intraday trading incorporating Japanese candlesticks was created by V.I. Safin, who describes it in detail in his book, Five Marks for Success. It's available on www.fxclub.com. When we look at a candle, the two most obvious prices are the open and the close. This is not accidental. Japanese candlestick analysis says that these are the two most emotional times of the trading day, the times most governed by fear and greed. If you have an interest in the stock market, you'll have most probably heard of the January barometer. This tells us that how the S&P 500 does in the first few weeks gives us a reliable indication of the direction of the market for the year as a whole. When Japanese candlesticks were being developed, Japan had a very martial culture. It was natural for them to see the trading day as a battleground between the forces of buyers and sellers, and the opening positions and shots in any battle can be of vital significance. Likewise, at the end of the trading day, pressure forces the hand of many traders, they might be thinking of targets that must be met or the danger of missing opportunities. Now, these considerations hold true for the majority of exchanges, but of course on Forex we've got 24 hour trading. The world spins round, exchanges start trading and others stop for the day. Openings merge into closings, which in turn merge into fresh openings. It's all very zen. It's difficult to know where the beginnings and the ends are. The only things we can say for sure on a Forex market are that we must take all four key prices into consideration and we can only be certain of a candlestick's length and colour only after it has been formed. Let's get on to the candlesticks themselves. We'll start by taking a look at the doji. This means unskillfully made.
unskillfully because they don't have a body, merely a horizontal line. We get doji when the open price and the close price are equal. This is usually taken as a sign that the bulls and the bears are well matched and their meeting resulted in a draw in this period. Doji signal indecision. Prices closed where they opened, on as even. Let's take a closer look at the conditions that form the doji. Let's say that price grows after the open. What we see forming here is known as a morobotsu, which means shaven, because it doesn't have any shadows. The bulls seem to be gaining the upper hand, but then the bears counter-attack, price falls and the candlestick body turns black. What we can see now is called the inverted hammer or the shooting star. But finally, the bear's counter-attack fades. Price is rise once more and at the end of the period, price closes at the same or almost the same level at which it opened. Voila! The doji. This type is known as the long-legged doji or the rickshaw man. Skilled traders understand the doji to mean caution. It signals uncertainty. It's time to consider closing any open positions. The doji is especially significant if you believe you're at the top or the bottom of the market. The rickshaw's man's crossbar is always roughly central. The candle should be long. Remember, the rickshaw man merely means indecision and the trend could reverse, could go into a range or who knows. If you get a doji at the top of the market that looks like the top half of the rickshaw, you've got a stronger signal of indecision. This doji is the consequence of a draw too, but it forms when the only price push of the period was bullish. As this doji is found on an uptrend, it means that for a number of days in succession, the bulls had the upper hand. Only this time, they attacked, but the ground they gained in their charge was cancelled out by a bearish counter move. This doji is known as the gravestone. It was named in the days when traders could only make money on a rise in prices, and it buried all hope for future profit. At the bottom of the market we can find inverted gravestones. They go by the name of the dragonfly, a symbol of the promise of summer and easy living. The dragonfly signals the reverse of a downtrend. Prices may well take flight up and away in a beautiful flash of jewel-like colour. The signal gains force if more than one doji occurs on strong support levels or channel lines, resistance levels or trend lines. But my friends, fools rush in and it's not a bad idea to wait for further confirmation. In this case, we get a couple of hammers, more of hammers later, and a strong move up and it's time to get stuck in and make some money. The beauty of Japanese candlesticks is that one single candle has the potential to predict future price action for days or even weeks ahead. We can look for perfection all our lives, but all we will ever get is an amazing variety of imperfections. It's very easy to say that the closing price will be equal to the opening price, but it's easier said than seen. I'd rather have a flawed diamond than the perfect pebble, and we have to accept reality, warts and all. So be ready for deviations from the doji ideal. I accept a candlestick with a body 10% of its height from high to low. For example, this one, or this one, and there's another. The colour of the body is of little account with these deviant dojis.
Just remember the saying, fools rush in, applies to all doji, ideal and deviant. Always look for confirmation of the signal. We'll look at some other deviants of Rickshaw Man, the Dragonfly and the Gravestone in a bit. But first, a word of caution. People often wrongly assume that the word reversal implies that the old trend is coming to a rapid end and price will immediately charge off in the opposite direction, forming a new trend. But of course, it ain't necessarily so. In fact, that happens pretty rarely. Our traders are standing at the crossroads Reversal signals point to indecision and you can never be too sure which way price will move next. The first thing to remember is that a complete trend turnaround usually occurs gradually, step by step, as the psychological state of the market changes. A reversal signal tells us there's a question mark over the future direction of price, but which way will it move? That is the question. Let's take a look at some reversals at the top of an uptrend. Here, the uptrend ends and prices drift for a while before a downtrend begins. And here, we see that after stalling in a range for a while, the prior uptrend resumes. And here, the uptrend sharply reverses into a downtrend. All the signal can tell us for certain is that the trend is under stress and we should close our positions on the trend and take our profit. Here are the other deviant dojis I mentioned earlier. They are also reversal signals of course. If the doji crossbar is in the top third of a long candlestick that is at the bottom of the market, it's a signal for the end of the bear trend. It's a deviant dragonfly. Conversely, if the crossbar is in the lower third of a long candlestick at the top of the market, you've got a deviant gravestone on your hands and the bullish trend is under stress. But the bottom line with all reversal signals, doji included, is that you should always seek confirmation from other signals before opening a new position. If a bearish doji is at the top of a bullish market, we know that this means indecision, steady. It's too early to short on this signal. Close your longs, square your positions, take your profit. This same signal would, however, be a good basis to go short on a bear market, especially if the doji was retesting a resistance level or the trend line. The majority of Japanese candlestick signals are reversals, and here are two more, the hammer and the hanging man. These are one candlestick patterns too. They have long lower shadows and small bodies, which are in the upper third of the price range. Surprisingly, it doesn't matter whether the candles are black or white. When you find one on a downtrend, it's signalling that the trend's life is near to an end and the candlestick is called a hammer. A similar candle on an uptrend signals the end of that trend 
and once again a reversal signal for an uptrend has a sinister name. It's called the hanging man and indeed it promises anything but good for the life of said trend. The hammer and the hanging man have three identifying features. One, the body is in the upper third of the price range. Two, the lower shadow is twice the length of the body. And three, the candle doesn't have an upper shadow or the shadow is very short. You'll have noticed that hammers and hanging men are very similar to doji. The main difference is that the hammer and the hanging man have bodies, albeit small bodies. They are bodies nevertheless. What we want are long lower shadows, short upper shadows and small bodies. Though the bodies can either be black or white, a white hammer body tells us that during the period prices fell but then a revival began with price closing near the high. It says that the bull enthusiasm is strengthening. A black hanging man says that the closing price could not return to the opening price level. The long lower shadow illustrates the bull's nervousness. Altogether, it points to the strengthening of the bears. Mark my words now, it's especially important to wait for further bearish confirmation when you have a hanging man on your hands. Just imagine the situation. The market is crackling with bullish energy. The next period opens at the previous high or near to it. Then price falls dramatically. Then it rises again and closes somewhere in the top third of the period range. There's your hanging man. The candlestick alone is insufficient to make it a reversal signal. Nevertheless, we can take it as a wake-up call. If the next candle opens below the hanging man's body, those who had bought within the body of the hanging man would be left exposed and in danger of finding themselves in a far worse position. A gap is the traditional confirmation of the hanging man's reversal signal and the wider the gap, the more emphatic the confirmation. Of course, we know that price gaps are less frequent on the Forex market than they are on the commodities and equities markets. And for Forex, an alternative bearish confirmation is that the candlestick following the hanging man is black, with price maxing and closing lower than the hanging man's max and close. Another confirmation is when a gravestone follows immediately on from our virtual execution. An apt ending no doubt, but also a final death knell for the trend. If a white candlestick follows on from the hanging man, then basically what happens next is anyone's guess. The signal has failed, and you can only wait for fresh signals, which could as easily be bullish as bearish. The hammer should also be confirmed, with bullish confirmation this time of course. So what you're waiting for is a white candlestick or maybe a dragonfly to confirm the signal. However, the hammer has more potency than the hanging man. So if a black candlestick follows the hammer but has a higher low than the hammer low, we can accept the low of the hammer as the probable low for the whole bearish movement. Nevertheless, I wouldn't act on a hammer until I got one of those further bullish confirmations. Japanese candlesticks, like other forms of chart analysis, are observation based rather than rule based. The hammer and the hanging man don't have to be perfectly proportioned. Just remember, the longer the lower shadow is, the more potent the signal. The next candlestick tells us that an uptrend will likely end. It's called a shooting star. It looks a bit like one and it ranks as one of the weaker signals. The shooting star's body is small and situated in the lower third of the candlestick's price range. The upper shadow is long. The shooting star can either be black or white. 
the star is witness to the fact that the period opened near its low, then price rapidly rose and then fell with price closing near the open. When you see a shooting star, you can make a wish for your heart's desire, but listen up. The shooting star needs confirmation. The ideal shooting star body gaps in relation to the previous candle, but it's not always necessary, especially on 4X, where gaps are rare birds. Here, I'd advise you to look for shooting stars on weekly or monthly charts. Like other reversal signals, the shooting star has more weight on longer time horizons. Once you've found it, look for confirmation on daily or intraday charts. After a weekly shooting star has been formed, you may well notice that a different reversal pattern has turned up on the daily chart for the same period. Pay particular attention to a shooting star after a burst of large and aggressive white candles, that is, at the top of a short-term trend. And, as ever, my recommendation at this point is to take your profit because the trees can't reach the skies and everything that blossoms will inevitably wither and die. You can see something similar to a shooting star at the bottom of the market and it's called an inverted hammer. It is the same small body in the lower third of the range but of course it's a bullish not a bearish signal. It signals the end of the bear trend it follows. The inverted hammer also needs further confirmation. One confirmation signal is when the price for the next period opens higher than the top of the inverted hammer's body. The bigger the gap, the stronger the confirmation. A long white candle is another confirmation signal. To be extra certain, you can confirm using technical indicators and support and resistance analysis. Although these one candle reversal signals have different names, they share a number of common features. First off, they have a wide price range, and two, they all have long shadows. Candlesticks like this with a small body and long shadows are called high wave. Japanese analysts say that candlesticks with very long shadows have lost their way. A group of high waves is a strong signal of the trend reversal. Here's what a group can look like. See how the shadows are leaning on the support level. Price cannot punch through it at all and promptly rebounds off it. These so-called lost candlesticks can tell us a thing or two about the way to go. Let's move on to reversal signals generated by combinations of candlesticks. The first combo I'd like to take a look at is the engulfing pattern. It's a significant reversal signal and is formed by two candlesticks. The engulfing pattern has three basic elements. One, there needs to be a decent uptrend or downtrend. Two, the engulfing pattern is formed by two candles with the body of the second completely engulfing that of the first. The shadows may also be engulfed, but this is not necessary. The body should be different colours. The only exception here is if the first candlestick is a doji. So, if at the end of a marked downtrend we get a black candlestick, which is in turn engulfed by a long white body, then there is our engulfing pattern reversal signal. Similarly, at the top of an uptrend, a white candlestick engulfed by a large black 
gives us a bearish engulfing pattern. The reversal day is the western counterpart of the engulfing pattern. We talked about it in chart analysis too. In a reversal day, a new maximum is set on the uptrend and price closes below the low of the previous day. However, the engulfing pattern also gives a signal when there isn't a reversal day, which can give an edge to the trader who is using candles. The engulfing pattern is more significant if the first candle has a very small body and the second is very long. This tells us that the balance of power is shifting more emphatically. The pattern is also more significant when it appears after a very lengthy or dramatic price move. The former suggests that all potential buyers went long some time back and there won't be the volume necessary to continue the price push upwards, whilst a downturn after a dramatic price rise forces a lot of positions to be closed to take profit, adding to the downward push. If the second candlestick of an engulfing pattern sees an increased volume, then this suggests that the prior trend is overextended and it increases the significance of the engulfing. Finally, if the second candle engulfs more than one candle, it increases its importance too. Next up is dark cloud cover. It's also made up of two candles. You can find it at the end of an uptrend or near the upper channel line of a trading range. Dark cloud cover signals a bearish reversal and here it is. The first candle has a long white body and price opens the next period at a new high. I mean it's higher than the previous candles high. However, price cannot maintain this momentum and closes significantly lower. Most analysts agree that price should close below the previous candlestick's midpoint to qualify as a potential reversal signal. The lower the second candlestick closes in relation to the first, the more likely a reversal will be. The name Dark Cloud Cover could well be connected with the fact that the chart has a stormy horizon and difficult times could well be ahead. Dark cloud cover signal is given more urgency when number one, the closer the black candle's closing price is to the previous white candle's opening price. Two, if both candles are shaven, that is without any shadows, and the black opens at the close of the white and closes at the white's open. Or thirdly, the second candlestick opens above an important resistance level and then the price falls. This tells us that the bulls cannot control the market. They could not maintain the initiative and were repulsed to former levels. Dark cloud cover has its precise antithesis at the bottom of the market. It too is a good reversal signal, a bullish one this time of course, and it goes by the name of the piercing line. Again, we have two candles, the first a long black and the second a long white. The white candle opens below the low of the previous black candle. Then price rises, forming a white body which closes above the midpoint of the previous black candle body. Once again, the white body only partially covers the previous black body. The more it covers, the greater the chance of the reversal. However, if our pattern is followed by a long black that closes below the low set by the bullish piercing line, or if the following long black engulfs the white, then a continuation of the downtrend is a distinct possibility. It's useful to 
to understand what's happening behind the piercing line. The downtrend that the piercing line is formed on is, of course, a series of bearish black candles which confirm the current dominance of the bears. When the open price for the period gaps below the previous low, it can inspire the bears to strengthen their short positions. However, price then begins to grow and closes a fair distance above the previous day's close and the bear's strengthening tactics have resulted in significant losses because they sold at the absolute minimum price. Now the bears are forced to cut their losses and to try and rescue any profit they can from the short positions they opened earlier. In other words, they are forced to buy. You can gauge the significance of piercing line using the same determining factors as for dark cloud cover, but for the bottom of the market rather than the top. Take a look at the Harami pattern. It's basically a back to front engulfing pattern. Harami means pregnant in Japanese. What you have here is a long candlestick, which I suppose is meant to be the mother, followed by a smaller candlestick playing the role of a child. At the top of the market, the mother is a long white candle with a bearish baby. And at the bottom, we find a long black followed by a short white. In both cases, the real body of the mother should completely engulf the real body of the baby. There are no hard and fast rules for the relative sizes of mother and baby, but bear in mind that the smaller the baby is in relation to the mum, the more potent the signal probably is. And I always like to remember that a small real body with long shadows means indecision on the market. And to me, indecision means beware, change is in the air. The Harami is not the most reliable of reversal patterns, but it's a useful warning to tighten our stops and be on the lookout for more signs that the current trend is on the wane. When the short candle in the Harami is a doji, we call the pattern a Harami cross. The trader that ignores a particularly long white candlestick followed by a doji is taking an unnecessary and foolhardy risk. When you spot a harami cross, look after number one and square your positions. Although it can be seen at the bottom of the market as a long black body followed by a doji, it's generally accepted as being more pretentious at the top. Let's move on to some poetically named patterns. The morning star has always symbolized a new dawn. It announces the sunrise and brings the promise of a brighter day. In Japanese candlesticks, the morning star is a good reversal signal found on a bearish market. It's a three candlestick signal. The first period sees a candlestick with a long black body. This is followed by a short candle, which can either be black or white, and which opens lower than the previous period's close. This second candle is the star. Then we get a white candlestick, which covers a significant proportion of the first candlestick's body by closing above the first candle's midpoint. You may well be able to explain the story behind the pattern yourself by now. The long black body means that the price is falling, the bears are feeling good. The small real body of the next period tells us that the downward thrust in price has become destabilized, leading to uncertainty and indecision. A sudden burst of volume accompanying this second candle confirms the power of the star. The third candlestick a long white body illustrates that the bulls have gained the initiative and launched their counter-attack. The perfect morning star has gaps before 
and after the middle candlestick, but in truth you will rarely come across the second gap. In my opinion, the absence of this second gap does little to reduce the significance of this reversal pattern. One way of reading a multi-candlestick pattern is through blending. The idea is that you can make one candlestick out of a number by taking the open, close, high and low from the group. So with this morning star, we take the open and the high from the first candle, the low from the star and the close from the final candle. This gives us a dragonfly, or at least a hammer with a small body over three time periods. In other words, it's a good reversal signal. The morning star has its opposite number at the top of the market where it's known as the evening star, the first sign of the coming night. As a bearish reversal signal, the evening star must appear on the uptrend to be a signal. Once again, the evening star is a three candlestick pattern. First off, we get a long white real body followed by the star. The third candle, a long black body, delineates the top and completes the pattern. The long black body closes below the midpoint of the long white, confirms the top formation and finishes the entire pattern. The main gauge of the potency of this pattern is the degree that the long black covers the long white real body. Although the evening star is primarily a reversal signal of an uptrend, it also gives us valuable information when price nears the upper boundary of a trading range. Let's list the factors that increase the likelihood that the morning and the evening star will live up to their promises. 1. The presence of gaps before and after the star body. 2. The degree at which the third candlestick body overlaps the first. And 3. Small trading volumes for the first candlestick and large trading volumes on the third testify to a weakening of the prior trend and a consequential strengthening of the reversal. Doji can be stars as well. All they need to do is to gap above from a previous candlestick body on an uptrend or to gap below the previous candlestick body on a downtrend. These evening and morning doji stars are harbingers of reversal too. They only need a long black for the evening doji or a long white for the morning doji to confirm the signal. These are morning and evening stars with an added punch, with the doji being that extra special ingredient. A doji star on an uptrend gives us a good guide to the top of a movement. Don't forget that if the doji star is followed by a gap with a white candle above, then the doji ceases to be a bearish signal. A mirror image of the situation occurs on the bottom of the market. The pattern deserves your extra special attention if the star forms on an uptrend with a total gap upwards. What I mean by a total gap is that nothing, not even the shadows overlap, and the star is followed with a similar total gap downwards by a black candle. What we have here is one of the strongest reversal signals around. It goes by the evocative name of the abandoned baby. There the poor little thing is, high and dry, completely alone. The only consolation for our more sensitive viewers is the abandoned baby is a very rare pattern indeed. Once again, we get a mirror image at the bottom of the market. This is an abandoned baby too but this time it's bullish. It is also an extremely rare pattern. 
the abandoned baby is similar to the western island tops and bottoms with the star playing the role of the island. On the currency market we will only see such babies on the longer period charts. However, on the stock markets you can find them on hourly candlesticks. The next pattern is called the tweezers. It's made up of two candles that are either next to or near each other and which have identical highs at the top of the market or identical lows at the bottom of the market. The tweezers are normally formed by the shadows and the candlestick real bodies can be of any type from a doji to a shaven top or bottom. Generally, tweezers are not considered to be a strong reversal signal, but their importance grows if they occur at the end of a very long trend or as part of a larger reversal pattern. On daily and intraday charts, you should focus on tweezers which are close to support or resistance levels. Tweezers that consist of doji or other candles with long shadows are especially worthy of our attention. So on an uptrend, we're looking for tweezers made up of doji, gravestones and shooting stars with the second candle opening near the period's minimum, rising up to the previous period's high and then falling back again, as if exhausted, to around the opening price. The longer those upper shadows are, the more weight we should give the tweezers. On a downtrend, we'll be looking out for dragonflies, hammers, and any doji with long lower shadows. Tweezers that have candlesticks between their arms are also of higher significance, and if there are a lot of candlesticks between the arms, you've got what Western technicals describe as double tops or double bottoms, which confirm levels of support and resistance. Just cast your minds back to our films on chart analysis. Basically, tweezers are useful when they're used in conjunction with other signals. They're good confirmation. However, tweezers that you find on weekly and monthly charts can be taken as a reversal signal in their own right. They have no need of confirmation and they provide us with new levels of support and resistance. The Western triple top and triple bottom have their counterparts in Japanese candlesticks too. In Japanese candlesticks, triple tops is known as three mountains. It is seen as an important reversal pattern and is formed when price is repulsed three times by a resistance level. The third mountain needs to be graced by a bearish pattern or candle, for example a doji or dark cloud cover. If the middle mountain is the highest, then this pattern has the special name of three Buddhas. In the West, this same pattern was named the more prosaic head and shoulders, although it had been identified and exploited in Japan for more than a hundred years before. At the bottom of the market we find the three rivers. We get this pattern when price tests the same minimum level three times. The reversal pattern is said to be confirmed when price breaks through the level of the two intermediate peaks between the three river valleys. A three Buddha pattern found at the bottom of the market would be known as the inverted head and shoulders in the west. Our final reversal patterns of today are very reliable three candlestick patterns. Three black crows tells us that an uptrend is near to an end. These three long black candlesticks need to close at or very near to their lows, 
therefore they should have no or almost no lower shadows. Traditionally, the second and third crow should open within the body of the previous crow, and each crow should close beneath the previous one's low, but on the 4x market we can accept the pattern when the second and third crow opens at the previous candle's close. This pattern is stronger if the first candle closes below the previous white candlestick's body. At the end of a downtrend, we find three white soldiers leading a bullish attack. These are three long white candlesticks, each with a higher close than the previous soldier. Once again, price should close at or near to each soldier's high, giving each soldier either no or very small upper shadows. Windows are a different aspect of Japanese candlesticks and usually serve as continuation signals. Windows is the term that the Japanese give to what the West call price gaps. The window is a price gap between the shadows of two concurrent candles. This is a window on an uptrend with the gap between the first candle's upper shadow and the second's lower shadow. And this is a window on a downtrend. Price moves in direction of the window, so when it gaps up, price will continue to rise in all likelihood, and when price gaps down, it should continue to fall. Windows also provide us with fresh levels of support and resistance. For example, the window on the uptrend is a continuation signal and price continues to rise. The correction of this uptrend should find its support at the level of the window. If the fall in price continues, closes the window and bearish pressure continues, the previous uptrend is considered over. On a downtrend, a window signals further price falls. Any correction should end at resistance at window level. If the window is closed and prices continue to climb, the previous downtrend is over. Japanese candlestick analysis teaches us to expect price to retest these windows levels of support and resistance and when there is a correction on an uptrend for example we should use window level as a buy zone. Of course if prices continue to fall and close the window we should square all long positions and consider going short. For windows on a downtrend our strategy should be the reverse. Always remember that chart analysis is subjective in nature and that successful technique comes through application and experience. There are no hard and fast rules here, there are only general principles which we can apply and interpret. As I said in our first film on chart analysis, never underestimate the market. When you are on the market you have to look after yourself. The market won't look after you and it doesn't take any prisoners. Do yourself a favour. Don't leave yourself exposed. Set your stop loss orders. Prepare yourself well. Make a plan and stick to it. Well, that's just about it for today. I hope you found this film useful and that you now have an understanding of the basics of Japanese candlesticks. Candlesticks are a useful weapon in the trader's arsenal and should open up fresh opportunities for you on the market. Take a look through Rumus's vast historical data banks. See how the candlesticks warned the alert trader of changes ahead. The principles of Japanese candlesticks have been honed through the years. Use them wisely and you will reap your just desserts. Thank you very much for your time and attention. 
If you have any questions, you can contact me at www.fxclub.com. Take care now and trade well.